All right, I came out here again today to work on a tune again. This time we're running at about 135 on the second regulator. I'm still running the 170, 175 on the first regulator. I filled a 250 bar. We're over here working on the 23 grain javelins. I just shot 1,055 on that uh, on that regulator setting. We're shooting the 218, 23 grainers. So I'm gonna try to leave everything the way it is and dial back on the valve adjuster right here to get what I want. I was watching Air Gunner Bob yesterday and he did a good video explaining while he was driving how um, Rolf from uh, South American, how Rolf uh, from Patriots Air Gunner Bob did a good video explaining how he was taught by the gurus in our industry how to do this. Set a target at 30 yards, I got one there. Once I print that good at 30, all one hole, three shot groups at a time, or three, three round shot groups at a time, I'm gonna move it to 15. And hopefully we get something with this today because I have been messing with this. This is my sixth time messing with this. And to be honest with you, it gets pretty frustrating. It gets very, very annoying. And it gets expensive. I've ordered so many of these things. Different grains, different diameters. But all in the name of science. Let's see what we get. All right, I got the gun charging over there with air. Let's see what we got here in the meantime. I think uh, I think we figured it out, man. My groups are definitely getting tighter. We're on to something here. So that was my first group, second group. Or no, I'm sorry. What, I started over here somewhere and then came up here, shot that one, and then shot that one. So they are getting tighter. I'm just aiming at the numbers. So I should, since the diameter of the slug is about half the size of the numbers, as soon as I get to where all three of these bullets are in the same hole, shooting out the number, then I'm gonna push this out to 100. And we'll see how it does there. If it does good, we're gonna keep that tune. So it is a... FX Impact Compact, 22 cal, I'm shooting 23 green. Patriot Javelin Slugs, um, 0.218 diameter. I'm asking a lot from that subcompact, or from that compact. It's a lot harder to tune because of the short barrel versus if it was a longer 600 or 700 millimeter. But I want the compact, so we're gonna make it work. I can't believe it, it finally happened. I'm so excited. I don't know what speed it's shooting at, we'll check it. We'll check the speed in a minute, but look at this. That was a three shot group. That was my first shot. And then I shot those two in the same hole. And then I thought to myself, maybe I shouldn't make an adjustment. Maybe it's settling in. So without doing anything else, I went over here, aimed at the eight, shot that three shot group. It's three shots right there, 30 yards. So I'm gonna adjust for zero. And then that's going to be my tune probably as long as it's shooting a good speed for me. I think that's it, man. So, yeah, that's my three shot group. <laughs> All right, so I think we found ourselves a decent tune here. I'm shooting 963 and 960, 965, 960, 963. So what that is for me, regulator number one, 170. About three and a half lines out on the valve adjuster. See that there? 16, about 4.9 clicks on the micro adjuster, maybe, on the, the barrel roller. And then we are, it's about 135 on the second rig. I just refilled, I shot three shots to get the air balanced out again. Let's see how this does at 30 yards before we move to 100. This is my third time shooting it at 30. We're just verifying that it's consistently doing one whole groups before we go to 100. It is very windy right now. You can see the smoke from the stove going right to left. So if I get a little bit of horizontal dispersion for right now, which I shouldn't get much at 30 with slugs, but if I do, I might just ignore it a little bit and go to 100 for today. All right, so that's it for me. That's that tune. Um, 960 to 965 is what I'm shooting. 
963, 965. I'm always right there in those those numbers. So I with some air out after I refilled it. Um, just shot this shot group right here. Just shot this at number nine. It wasn't quite a one holer like this one was when I first decided to settle on this tune. But look at that, man. Come on. That's probably just shooter air, right? Um, these were a minute ago. I adjusted my valve adjuster to try to get more velocity and decided to go back to that. So this might, my rifle really seems to like this tune right here, which I just showed you. So it's consistently doing that and that at 30. So let's push it out to 100 and see what we get. All right, so we're at 100 yards here. I got a nice back stop down there that I put myself in line to with the shooting position from the patio, which is right by the four wheeler up there. Right there under that table, or on the table. So before I shoot this group, I want to point something out. This target on the right has shots at these numbers. So we're going to shoot at 100. I'm going to aim at this one on the left. So take a good note of how the target looks now because it's going to look different when I'm done in a minute. Um, I might even take a picture of before and after, but... Uh, at 100 yards on this one, I'm probably going to aim here. And maybe on this one, I will aim at this thing, the number five. I don't know. I'm just trying to keep my shot group that I'm about to do away from these. These are all marked up, but it's possible to shoot one in there. Um, actually, I got to mark these two. I got to mark a lot of those. Um, so, yeah, we'll see what we get. Yeah, Sharpie marked all my holes. Let's get back there and punch some fresh holes in this thing. So I'm thinking about doing this one and that one or this and that or something. I don't know. I'll call it out in the video. It all depends on what my scope sees. Or it all depends on how clear it is in my scope and everything. I suspect that I'm going to be dropping um, about a foot here from a 30 yard zero with an inch and a half or an inch, half, an inch high. I suspect I'll be dropping about a foot here. So. I got to keep that in mind. If I'm aiming here, I'll probably be okay. Here, I might fall into there. We'll have trouble, so we'll figure it out. All right, so I'm back under here. We got the target set up out there. I'm going to range find from the muzzle the target to see exactly where we're at. Ninety-nine yards from right here, so... 99 yards I'm going to hold um, I'm not going to hold any elevation I'm going to aim right where I'm aiming and then I'm going to measure with a tape measure exactly how far these drop also put it in the ballistics program so I've got that saved as well and we're killing um, a few birds with one stone here alright let's check it out Relax, it's good. Where do I want to aim? On the left target, I'm going to aim at the bullseye. The X in the chest. Holy crap, it drops a lot. I think I'm hitting like two and a half mils low. I got a headwind, hold on.
Okay, so I do see my shock group down there. It is about an inch and a quarter, maybe. And it's two and a half mils long. Alright, there's no wind. Let's see what we get. Dropping. Let's try to hold this at two and a half mils and shoot a good group at. So we're going to hold two and a half mils and we're going to shoot at uh, we're going to shoot at the number seven on the left target. down there looks pretty good. So I'm assuming the wind is not helping me in this situation. Alright, let's send it. I'm going at the number nine on the left target at the bottom. Second shot, number nine. All right, let's see what we got here. So, looks like we're shooting the same size group at 100 in both different shot groups. This shot group, I was aiming at the bullseye. Shot that, it was pretty windy. And this shot group, I was aiming at the bullseye, but I held about 2.5 mils. So, just to get it closer to separate it from that one. So, this was just for shits and giggles. This group here, I'm actually gonna measure from there to there for my drop. And uh, that way I can put it in my blisses uh, program. Um, it looks like we're at about an inch and a half here, to be honest with you. Um, not, not ideal for me, but it's gonna work for coyote and fox in the yard here for headshots, which is what I'm doing this for. So let's go ahead and get this stuff documented on paper, put it in the rifle case, and I will get out my night vision scope and zero it. So we're good to go on that while we got this tune ready. All right. All right, we got our zeroed. We are going to mark where this was. Let's see that. One, two, three, about three in, so. Put a mark here for that. Mark here for that. Alright, we got 
got the ATN on here for the night vision. Got my eye relief set. Got a scope where I need it. Let's shoot it, get a zero down there at 50, and then we'll mark on the railings where this one goes. Shot. Get myself pretty close here. I'm gonna do these one shot at a time because I cannot see. I cannot see these impacts in the scope, so I'm gonna aim right at the head on the one on the right. I'm just gonna shoot dead center, make an adjustment, and then we'll shoot a group. See what I got. All right, so I was aiming here and we hit there. So I'm just gonna make a little adjustment down and right. And if you know anything about the ATN scopes, you know that you need to be able to see or at least know where your first impact was to do their zeroing system. So I'm gonna color this a little bit bigger and brighter. And then we are gonna say that about this right here was dead center. So I'm gonna actually aim at this with my scope reticle and then bring a secondary zeroing reticle from this point to that point or vice versa, I don't remember exactly. All right, I can see my aiming point. So I'm gonna go ahead and make those adjustments and then we'll be good. All right. Second shot. It just got really bright. Holy crap. Alright. Let's see. Let's go see what we got. Sometimes you can get scope fatigue in your eye if you stare through it for so long. Especially with those digital scopes because they got the screen in there and it gets really weird. So sometimes you gotta close your eyes or get off the get off the gun for a minute, then get back on it, and take a shot within you know your first 15 seconds or so. And you'll be good. <laughs> Jeez, that's a terrible grouping. But that's what I was aiming at. Um, God, I shot just as good or better at 100 yards with the other scope than I did with the ATN. Definitely rushed my shots, but let's uh, put more air in it. And then let's, uh, let's say we aim, maybe I'll aim at this number five. I can see that in my scope pretty well. So I'll aim at that. And then we'll verify that this is centered Roughly. All right, I just uh, don't know exactly what's going on here, so I'm gonna leave it the way it is. That scope is a, is a pain in the ass to zero that scope, so it's just gonna have to stay where it's at. So the ATN scope is frustrating me. It's a little windy. I'm just gonna leave it the way it is for now. I got other stuff I gotta do today, so it's good enough for now, I guess. Alright, so I just had some fun. Decided to mess around with my rifle a little bit. Um, yeah, so it's windy, I guess. Uh, I guess maybe that's why there's some weird stuff going on, but I was aiming there, hit there. I was aiming right there and hit right where I was aiming at, actually. Uh, aimed right here, hit there. So, we're doing all right for what I'm gonna use this for. All right. All right, well, pretty much wraps this up. Let's, uh, let's go back to the rifle and I'll show you what I'm gonna do now that I got this set up for night hunting. I'm kind of surprised those uh, 23 grain javelin slugs didn't go through that metal paper clip. But the javelins are made from a really soft lead, so probably why so 
ですね。Okay, and then on this opposite side, the gun here. I marked where the ATN scope rail is, and I wrote an A for ATN. And now we've got both of these sighted in. We've got them marked on the rail where they go. Now we can use our hands, take them on and off. I can uh, tighten this with fingers really tight, and it still stays in place very well. I can take it off with my fingers, same as this one. So at this point, we're ready to go. Everything's sighted in for the 23 grains, and that is the process, man. It's a lot, but it's worth it. All right, so I got everything in place. I'm gonna leave the night vision on because I'm gonna actually do some nighttime coyote hunting here soon. I wrote the tune on everything on this piece of paper. I'm just gonna stay right here folded up in the case. And I also have pictures of everything on my phone. So this is how we are gonna do it. Bam, just like that. And now I keep my marker in there because I like to have a marker with me. We shut this, we're set up, ready to go. I'm gonna have to find a different place to keep my other scope because it doesn't fit in there. But now that I'm just shooting slugs, primarily, I may reorganize this and take the pellets out, try to find another place for the scope. But for now, I gotta go. Gotta go do dad shit. Thanks for watching that, guys. Peace.